Hey housemate friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today you might hear some reminiscent clicking of the old days as I'm filming downstairs and my husband is using the computer. So uh, just drink that in for everyone who is here before 7K. So today I'm gonna be showing you my cheapest and also most common, least expensive house plants. A couple days ago, I did my most rare and expensive plants, so I thought I'd bring you downstairs and show you my cheapest and least expensive house plants. Before we get into the content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Maybe you've been binge watching my videos and you just forgot to hit that subscribe button. Welcome to the community. Also, I have YouTube memberships, which you can check out at the link in the description. They're only $5 a month and you get access to a ton of stuff. Come hang out with us. But uh, I mean, filming down here is so nice. Like I keep my downstairs pretty cute. We're gonna work our way from like cheapest and most common to maybe a little bit more uncommon. And this is gonna be strictly based off of like what I kind of paid for them or what I might have paid for them. So number one, we're gonna start off with my Epipremnum Marble Queen. My Epipremnum Marble Queen I got in a trade with one of my members and I had been talking about how I kind of wanted to try uh, Pothos again. They were like, yo, I got an extra one if you want it. And I was like, yeah, I do. So we did a cute little trade and they sent this to me. It came in this awesome pot and it has been doing so good. I'm sure they'll actually be glad to see I haven't killed it. At least not yet. <laughs> actually, we're getting a new leaf currently and it looks like it's gonna be pretty darn uh, cute. I've been actually really enjoying this plant. It's been loving the downstairs bright and direct light. I do, however, have a Northwest. Oh wait, look you guys, we got a little freaking sport. We got a little white guy, that's so cute. Uh, I do have Northwest facing or Northeast, I don't know. It gets more light than a regular North facing window. It's been loving it. It hasn't really been losing leaves like Pothos will do when you kind of aren't giving them enough light. Normal when people are showing me like, oh, my pothos lost a leaf, like what's happening? Usually it's normal leaf shed, which is completely normal. Uh, plants will kind of prune themselves and get rid of the older leaves, or you're not giving your pothos enough light. And again, when I'm saying pothos, I'm referring to its common name. This is an epipremnum. Pothos is a completely different genus. But yeah, this was a super nice gift trade that I got and it's actually doing really well and it's gotten a lot bigger since I got it. So this is my pothos. This would probably be $10 at my local grocery store. Uh, that's what size plants in these type of pots are. If you got it from Trader Joe's, it could be five bucks. So really, really inexpensive here. All the plants I'm gonna be showing you are kind of the same price. So it's hard for me to be like, oh, let's put them in order. Okay, so this next one might be a little controversial as my choice, but in my town, this plant has gotten extremely cheap and that is the string of turtles. I paid $5 for the string of turtles. I was gonna put it first on the list because I think it would be uh, less expensive than this plant but this is not typically a common plant. I mean, it's still exciting when they pop up, but at my local Zamzos, this literally was $4.98, I think. It was cheaper than $5, so. This is my string of turtles. I have a bunch of string of turtles. This is just the only one I don't have potted up, uh, but this is a plant that you can usually find for generally inexpensive, as long as you're not going to somewhere that is gonna have pretty decently high prices. Uh, you can also find them sometimes at Costa Farms, like in Costa Farms plant shipments to your local big box store, 10 or $20, depending on the size of the hanging basket. That's where I've gotten both of mine before and then one of them was a gift. String of turtles is great. It's a succulent, so you're supposed to treat it like one. I believe because it is also peperomia, it is, uh, you can easily propagate it by just leaves. They also flower super easy, not that that's really important. Yeah, I don't know, string of turtles is a really great plant. You give it a lot of sun and it grows really easy. It doesn't need that much from you. I only water when it starts the, when the little leaves here start to seem more flat instead of round, because they're more of a rounded type of leaf. Okay, so this plant that I'm about to talk about, you might not have heard of before, but this is one of my favorite common plants. This plant was $12 at the Potted Elephant in Portland, Oregon. This is a Passiflora. This is a plant that in uh, places other than Idaho, this will just grow on the side of your road. Uh, people will put them in their yards. I believe in California, they just grow indigenously. There's a bunch of different types of Passiflora. I believe that mine is Passiflora biflora or something like that. Uh, but basically it grows these little butterfly looking leaves that imitate a butterfly so that plants won't, or bugs won't eat them. Someone left a comment on my channel before about this. 
How did the plant know to evolve like that? How did it know what a butterfly looked like? So uh, that's kind of creepy if you think about it, but he's a very fast grower. He was in danger for a little while because I, I low-key forgot about him because he was up on my shelf in the corner. Uh, but not, not to worry, I have remembered about him. Quite a few little new growth spots right here. And my favorite thing about him is he likes to grab. You're not even gonna be able to see it, but there's these little teeny tiny strings. And basically, Passiflora will climb and grab. Here's one where it grabbed onto itself. It literally like used a string and grabbed onto itself and it's so cute. It looks so whimsical and it kind of looks like a, uh, what is they called? One of those ones that kind of look like potatoes. You know, like, a, oh, it looks like a codex plant, like flowers from a codex plant without the stress of trying to grow a codex plant if you're not used to it. Potted Elephant actually gave this one to me for free because I couldn't decide if I wanted to try it out or not. And so they literally like, just take it. <laughs> So I was like, no. And then they were like, yes. And then I was like, okay. <laughs> so this is the uh, Passiflora or passion flower. Okay, this next plant I'm gonna show you is my husband's plant actually. And this is the aluminum pilea. This plant is completely silver. There is no green on its leaves. It is literally just a silver plant guy. Also, he's in a really cute pot. My husband took a liking to this plant at the chlorophyll corner in Arizona, and I'd actually never seen it before. <laughs> they just gave it to him for free. However, this plant costs $8 for one of this size. That's really, really good. Um, and it's just a little cute freaking silver dude. Like it's so shiny and silvery. I love it so much. Anyways, this guy sits downstairs and he's gotten taller since uh, we got here. He's actually putting out new leaves. Oop, new leaves as we speak, which is so exciting. Uh, but this is another really amazing little common and a cheap but cool plant. Okay, so this plant is next on my list and this is my Peperomia Frost. This plant is green but has a silver uh, twinge to it that is very unique. Uh, my husband actually bought this for me as a Thanksgiving present, which was really interesting. This was actually in the secondary basket. It was in like a wicker basket with a Thanksgiving ribbon on it and like a turkey or something. And uh, this is a $10 plant. I know because they still sell them at my local Albertsons. And I am so impressed I've been able to keep him alive. He definitely sheds. Like this is a plant that will shed its older leaves often. And you can definitely tell it is growing uh, this way. So I definitely need to rotate it. This is a plant that is super easy to care for. I would argue it's one of the easiest peperomias to care for. And this plant actually was really hard to find for a little bit in Boise. I remember when Edwards first got a couple of them in, I asked if they would put one on hold for me and call me the next time they got one. And they did like that's how badly I wanted this plant. And I've been able to keep this plant alive for a really long time. I am usually like, I know this sounds bad, but I'm not the best at keeping plants alive once I have them, unless they're like an expensive plant. For me to be able to keep this thing alive, I'm just, I'm really proud of it <laughs> because this is very easily replaceable, but Chris bought it for me. And so I just wanna, you know, like do it good. Right, Chris? <laughs> it's too bad people couldn't see your dramatic turn. All right, so this is going to be our next plant on the list. And this is my Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye, and he's huge, if you can't tell. This one is doing the best, this stem right here. It's actually doing really, really good. These two stems are growing away from the window, so they're like trying to turn towards it, but I think I might prune them back and then root these uh, to try to get them to do a little bit better. This plant's really remarkable because the back of its leaves are bright red and shiny. Like if you put a light up to it, they sparkle. And then the front are these green leaves that have freaking polka dots, which is so cool. I don't know, I love it so much. This was a $15 Costa Farms plant that is still alive. I might have even had this plant for over a year now at this point. He's gotten very large. I used to wonder how people were able to get them to get so big. I did buy him kind of established, but the cost of arms plants are not this big. Probably about, it was probably about uh, up to here uh, before, and then this stem is brand new, and so is this one as well. My Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye, $15. Very cute, very cute, sir. 
I love the freaking polka dots. Okay, so the next plant on my list is going to be this Philodendron Brazil. This is a plant that I actually re just recently purchased. This plant cost me $10. It actually blew my mind and I think you're actually, I think you're seeing this video before you're seeing the video where I found it. So sorry if I just spoiled the surprise, but I found this entire plant for $10, which is really exciting because recently the plant prices have been going down. Because of that, we are seeing some leakage into some of these plants that were pretty expensive. I think a couple months ago, this whole plant would have cost about 20 or $30, but I paid 10 bucks for him. And I got it at the same place I got the $5 string of turtles. So something's in the water over there. But this is a great uh, philodendron. So this is a slightly variegated uh, philodendron. As you can see, it has some little yellow stripes that like to come down, down the middle right here. And I believe that this is the plant that the other sports like the cream splash and the Rio come from. They call it Philodendron Rio, Rio Brazil. But they're really cool and pretty. This plant's also really easy to take care of, provided you don't let it get like sick with spider mites or something. I like to keep these plants hanging up and by themselves, not around any other plants. But these plants are great and they last a really long time. They don't require a ton of light. They're super cheap and they're really fulfilling. They grow fast and it's just a good time. You should definitely get one and also make sure you check them for sports. Okay, so we're getting into some plants now that are just a little bit less common, but still pretty common and inexpensive. This is the Skindapsis pictus exotica. Mine is growing all in one direction because I keep it right in my window. All the leaves grow out that way and there's nothing on the back of the pot. Mine's actually really cool. It has a variegated spot, this bad boy. There's a couple leaves on here that are pretty variegated. I got this one from Jay's Greenhouse and it is really beautiful and wonderful. I wasn't obsessed with this plant until I saw Harley's in person, honestly, a couple times. This is one of her favorite plants. She talks about it all of the time. And finally, after seeing hers, like always just do so good, I was like, but this is the Skindapsis exotica. So this is the one that has the larger leaves and the normal variegation pattern. Like you'll see it have Pretty similar patterning on all of the leaves. It's not a silvery ant, it's not an argyreous. This is the exotica and I think it's so beautiful. There was a couple of months where I was just dying for one of these. It was the only thing I could think about and I was just looking at them online and I think I bought it before he ever even got to put it up on the website, so. So I was definitely influenced to be into this plant. This plant cost me a little bit more money. I think that this was a $25 plant, so a little bit more expensive. I know that um, j, j Greenhouse in Utah sells baskets like this for like 15, sometimes only $10. Mine's gotten a lot bigger though since I've gotten it. So it wasn't it wasn't this massive when I got it. Yep, but I love this plant. It's also really easy to care for and it just sits in my little window and looks really, really pretty. <laughs> okay, so this next plant on my list is the spider plant. And this is a plant that I've been really obsessed with as of late. This plant is so easy to get to thrive. It's just a miracle and it's so cute. So I have the curly spider plant, which I think is also known as the Bonnie spider plant. And mine is putting out a ton of babies. So it was starting to put out some of these babies when I first got it, but it's added off new shoots with new babies. And we have two new baby shoots growing out the top, which when I got one, I wanted one to have babies, but this plant only cost me $8.99. So, <laughs> You could say I was pretty excited to get one that was really cute, even though it didn't really have more than just like the one baby strand. I think I got this from a succulent day. I am not sure. I went through kind of a phase where I bought a lot of spider plants and then the ones that lived, lived, and the ones that didn't, didn't. And this is the one that lived. <laughs> and this plant is really easy to take care of. However, my other one did get thrips. So I do know that thrips are attracted to this type of plant, but I love this plant so much because you can literally put it in a Northeast facing window and it's gonna like do fine. Like I literally have mine in a dark corner. Like this gets pretty bright light over here, as you can tell. Like sometimes it even makes my camera become overexposed, but I keep this in a dark spot over there. Love, love the spider plant. And also it's just so like whimsical. Okay, so this next plant I'm gonna show you, I actually can't believe that I own because I always talk trash about this plant. And this is a $15.99 syngonium I got pretty recently. And this is called Syngonium Regina Red, but people on the internet are telling me that it's actually Syngonium Pink Freckles, uh, which is a pretty rare 
syngonium because it's a sport of Regina red. Basically, you're looking for stuff like this, like the green speckles. There's not supposed to be speckles. The whole thing's just supposed to be pink leaves. Uh, then you'll see stuff like that. The newer leaves are like half green, half pink. And I just, I don't know, I bought it because I thought it looked really cool. Like that, you'll see stuff like that. And uh, my friend Natalie had found one kind of similar before at a Twin Falls nursery we went to together. And I thought it was so beautiful. Obviously, I wasn't gonna ask her if I could have hers. So um, <laughs> I just didn't say anything. And I was like, oh my gosh, congratulations on finding that. That's so pretty. And I had no idea that it was uncommon. So technically, technically this breaks the rule because I guess this plant is hard to find. But I bought it literally thinking it was just a normal syngonium. Just thinking it was a normal syngonium and it's been going good. It's actually given me new leaves. And someone told me in my comment section, they were like, hey, if you're having trouble with syngonium, buy a more established one. And I bought this the day I put out my video talking about plants I like not to buy for beginners. And so, um, I decided that day, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try it. I'll try one again. And I'll try one that's established. And so that was this one for me. It even as a freaking vine. For those of you who didn't know Syngonium could vine, they vine like Epipremnum. So, I don't know, I think it's cute. And I thought it was really cool that it ended up being a special plant. And I thought it was cool that it had a really cool color pattern that I like as well, because I usually don't like color patterns on Syngonium that aren't like Albo Syngonium, so. Regina Red. <laughs> this is my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. But I actually believe that this is a variegated Chelsea. And that's because there is normal, like literal normal Chelsea leaves in it. And then there's variegated like Chelsea leaves. So this is a different tag. This guy I think cost me about 15 or 20 bucks. Was not expensive at all. And it was a lot smaller when I bought it. He's kind of becoming a big lad now. And he sits right in my window. He does really good. He loves the light. And uh, he's actually like giving me a full white variegated stem right here, which is pretty cool. And uh, he just does really well. However, um, if I didn't have like a northeast facing window, I don't think I would put him in, like if you have a normal north facing window, I wouldn't put a Hoya in it. And my normal Chelsea both do fine here as well as my Hoya Carii. So I would say be careful if you just have a north facing window without grow light. I think it's cool. They're inexpensive and they're really beautiful. And you can usually find them at most big box stores and most nurseries. Here's another little one I have that I just bought like the other day. Okay, now while I have a lot other common plants over here, the last plant I'm gonna be showing you is a Philodendron Mykins. Now, the reason that this plant is on this list is because, because it's becoming a lot more common than uncommon and even rare. I wouldn't say that this is a rare plant anymore as much as it used to be two years ago. I just bought the other day for 18 bucks which is just bizarre. Can you even see that? Yeah, for 18 heckin' bucks. And that is really weird because a lot of places in town, this is being sold for 30 or even $40. I love Philodendron Mykins. It's one of my favorite vining plants uh, because of its typically low price for a velvet philodendron, as well as its care. This plant has significantly easy care compared to other velvet philodendron. And you literally just put it in your windowsill and it does good. I keep mine in a northeast facing window and it just does amazing so however this plant is not always so cheap you will need to be prepared to pay up to $40 for it if your local store gets it in I've never seen it sold locally for more than that but maybe your stores are different and it is more expensive where you're at so this guy I have propagated a ton so he is kind of an ugly duckling but I've had him for a year and a half at this point and he's doing good he just definitely needs a haircut though but He's just, you know, kind of ugly. Anyways, those are my house plants that I have that are relatively, well, they're pretty cheap if you think 15 to $10 is cheap. Everyone thinks you need to just buy expensive plants to be a plant collector, and that's not true. If you own common plants, like you're, like even if you have two plants, like you're, you can be in the plant community, you can be a plant collector. A lot of people will be like, oh, I'm a, I wanna be a plant collector, but I don't have rare plants. You don't need to own rare things to collect them. You can collect anything. You can collect monks. Just don't let people gatekeep you out of the community. Common plants are wonderful. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, thirty-three. Yeah, I have thirty-four common house plants downstairs alone. Doesn't count the ones that I have upstairs. Don't let people gatekeep you out of the community. If you want to only collect like common and inexpensive plants, that is totally cool, and it'll be way better for your pocketbook. <laughs>
I just want to do a little honorable mention here. Uh, string of Hearts. This plant is not cheap though. This is about $40 plant, so you gotta be ready to spend 50 bucks on something. The Black Pagoda Lipstick Plant. This is another plant that's relatively common, but also has a bit of a higher price. This one was $30. So, um, I don't know. These are two plants that I love that I have multiples of. Well, multiples of this one. I have five. But this is one I've wanted for a while and I was finally able to track it down in Twin Falls and I'm glad I waited to buy one that was big. I love common plants. I know you guys aren't really used to hearing me talk about them here as much, which is why I don't. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching my little video on uh, cheap and common plants that I own. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please make sure you hit like, subscribe, and tweet me at PlantMeAshley. Follow me on Instagram as well, and TikTok and Twitter at PlantMeAshley. Become a channel member. It's only $5 a month, and you'll gain access to an entire community of over 160 channel members. We do bi-weekly events like game night uh, for the entry level, and then I'm always on the Discord, and so is a bunch of other people ready to hang out. We have a mental health section, a workout section. We have an LGBTQ plus support section. We got a great community. Now I'm gonna show you some Raven photos. Come hang out, subscribe. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. See you in the next plant section. You are so pretty. Thank you so much for the extra channel support to the planted Carly Flower, All the Green Places, Botanicas, and Carissa Lawrence.